Welcome back to the Brentford save everyone. We got our January transfer business done and dusted in yesterday's episode. If you want to see what we did and who we signed, then check yesterday's episode and jump on the channel page for anything you may have missed over the past few days. We may end up making another signing today, that being via the youth system as our three monthly scouting reports have come back. Ivan Tony is kind of single-handedly leading the way for us so far this season. 16 goals, joint second in the league. He may well do that in real life this season as well. We currently sit 8th in the table. We've Manchester United, Brighton and Arsenal today. So we might not be sitting 8th come the end of play. Arsenal having a decent season up in 5th as well. Currently at the top. We've not really paid too much attention to the top of the table so far this year. But Manchester United actually a joint top. They've only conceded 19 goals in 25 games. We might find it quite hard going to score against them today. Uh, level at the top with Spurs on 57, then six points back at Manchester City, a further two Liverpool and then a further five to Arsenal and four more to Wolves. So obviously we're delighted to be in eighth place. We don't think we'll finish quite that high, uh, but at the bottom of the table, Norwich are now into the double digits at least. 13 points for them, 18 for Watford, 19 for Southampton, then a gap of four to our second opponents today, Brighton, a game that we certainly should be winning. Uh, Manchester United and Arsenal, however, don't know. So let's have a look at these youth scout reports then and see if there's anybody here that could be of any real proper use. I don't know about this guy yet, Christian Algland. I'm not sure. Uh, it's just so hard to commit to players that are not necessarily setting the world. Like We've seen players that are valued at upwards of a million, which is why I just... Don't think players, even though the potential range is 72 to 94, if we're being realistic, that range is probably 72 to 78 by the time it's narrowed itself down. So it's just a no. 15 years of age, 76 to 94, 625,000 pound valuation. He could be a goer. I'm going to reject these two. I think because of the fact that we're not solely relying on the youth system in this save, I'm not going to go for players that are kind of or maybe in three or four years' time type of player. I'm going to go for players that are basically able to step in and either do a job now or potentially do a job within a season or so. Matthiasen? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, I'll hold for now and we'll just wait and see. Uh, 63 to 85. 70 to 94, but he's valued really lowly. It's just a, it's just a no, I think. It's just a no. And then... From Sweden. No, nothing from Sweden. So uh, we're still waiting for a couple of the position changes to go through for our uh, current youth players. The main one being Olsen to Cam. Olsen to Cam is the main one. Rasmussen is a player that I need to actually put a development plan on now. Philip Rasmussen can play on either side of midfield. He's left footed though. Four star, four star is great. But we should probably try and improve his dribbling and his passing more so than anything else at this particular moment in time. Acceleration is already okay. Three weeks that's going to take, so he should go up a rating or two in today's episode alone. So let's jump into the first game of the day then. It will be Mikel Damsgaard's first game for the club. I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he can offer to this team and to this club. Uh, Still sticking with uh, Roslu on the right-hand side, but Anderson is probably going to take over sooner rather than later. But he's grown quite well. He's up four so far this year, our uh, domestic domestic um, default right-back. So I'm not going to write him off at all. But I, I might write us off against Manchester United. Here we go. Manchester United in that... Third strip, David De Gea in goal, Diogo Dallo, Harry Maguire, Rafael Vran and Alex Tellez, Fred and Donny van der Beek, Jaden Sancho, Bruno Fernandes, Jesse Lingard and Edinson Cavani up top. On the bench, Martial, Greenwood, Luke Shaw if they need something defensively on either side of uh, that back four. Okay, it's, I, I, I'll be honest. That third kit for United, when it first came out, I thought it was absolutely hideous. It has grown on me as the season went by, but I think their their kits this season certainly are a lot better. The sponsor doesn't necessarily suit too much, but that greyish kit, grey-blue kit, looks really, really nice for Manchester United this year. 
Obviously, we'll have all of the new kits on FIFA 22 when that comes out. But for now, we'll have to deal with last year's kits on last year's game. And fingers crossed, we can get a result that isn't what you might have expected from last year's two teams with Brentford and Manchester United. We can hopefully get one that is more indicative of what we've been able to do this season in this save. But Manchester United are currently joint top of the table, so it still might be a battering for us. And the bake to Edinson Cavani and Bruno Fernandes is clean through. This should be, but won't be, 1-0 Manchester United. Why is he not shot there then? Come on, Bruno. You have got to be more instinctive than that. You've got to be aware of what's around you and know that that space is disappearing. Here's Damsgaard on his first attack. His first delivery on his left foot isn't the best, but he's going to hopefully shake off that challenge, which he's done really well. Look for... Ivan Tony, who's turned Rafael Varane. But the big Frenchman comes out on top. That should be 1-0 Man United, even though we're at this end of the field now. Bruno's got to tuck that away. Didn't even shoot. Lingo with a throw for Man United. Fakes it one way, goes the other. Bruno? Oh, I don't even know what that was as the first touch from the defender. Cavani has the strength. Here's Donny van der Beek. Get out. I said, get out. Tony can't win that against Rafael Varane, though, and back comes the ball again. Jaden Sancho, Bruno Fernandes is going to shoot this time. He's taking his sweet time, and no, not a dangerous effort when it finally comes in. Bruno Fernandes is absolute wank for Manchester United right now in this save. He cannot do a thing right. Seems so obsessed with just making sure he gets it onto his right foot that he's wasting chance after chance. Two good opportunities, the first one more so than that one, but still two good opportunities to potentially give Manchester United a 1-0 lead that they haven't taken. Aya, Tonyeka, Ivan Tony, Harry Maguire with me. Mm, Harry Maguire getting a good tackle in. Jensen though, De Silva. Oh, Mikkel! Goal on debut! Mikkel Damsgaard! Let's go! Brentford 1, Manchester United 0. It's just on his own. It was the obvious thing to do. What a start! Ivan Tony a bit flamboyant with his fall, but great touch by De Silva. And Mikkel was right on that. Instantly switched on. And on his left foot, slams it home. That's why we bought him. 1-0 against Manchester United. Back to Alex Tellez. Ran to Donny van der Beek again. As far as we're aware, Paul Pogba hasn't left. I didn't actually check their bench to see what their options were. No, I did. Paul Pogba wasn't there, was he? It was Greenwood and Luke Shaw. Anthony Martial. No sign of Paul Pogba. Bruno with good footwork there. And Fred will look for him again. Not find him, though. But he has taken it off of Rico Henry. Still delays on it. You are not given a penalty for that. You are not given a penalty for that. Not to be shown a yellow? Ah, uh, maybe... Maybe, I guess if he goes to ground, then you'd say definite penalty. So, just because he stays on his feet doesn't mean it shouldn't be a foul. Bruno Penandes has been absolute shite so far. But his penalty taking is still top draw. Boos ring out around the Brentford Community Stadium. But Manchester United are level. Dallow over the top, but it's loose. We'll pick it up again. And actually get in behind Diogo Dallo. And Ivan Tony could be in here if I can just find the right pass. Oh, and he's got the strength to get away from the defender. David De Gea with an excellent save. And Alex Tellez back on the line to ensure that we don't take our advantage back again. Excellent work from them defensively once they made the mistake. Ivan Tony trying his best to add a second for us, but nothing he does at the minute in this game is coming off. Even getting past the keeper. Well, I say past the keeper. Having a shot with the keeper out of goal. And Alex Tellez is there on the cover. Brilliant defensive work from Manchester United after perhaps the laps of uh, positioning from Diogo Dallo. And then people not tracking runners properly in the middle. At least not being where they should be with their defensive line. Now don't tell me they're going to go up the other end and score a goal. No, Ricky Henry's going to get in the way of that and we'll get rid of it. Oh, that was close. But thankfully Jaden Sancho can't get there. And I tell you what, Damsgaard's in again. Damsgaard's in again. Mikkel! Mikkel! Oh, wide. Oh, would have been amazing. Bruno. Apparently rubbish unless he's taken a penalty. 
His form certainly was incredible when he first joined Manchester United. But recently, and certainly at the Euros as well for Portugal, he has fallen away with that form. It's not like he's a Messi or a Ronaldo, though you can't keep up with that. We can't expect him to keep up with that level of form consistently. Only the world's absolute best do. But Josh De Silva is also a player whose form, for me, has dropped off a little bit in this save of late. He went through a real rich vein of form. Goal scoring, getting assists and everything else. But, I mean, I guess he's gotten an assist in this game already. He could have had a goal there too. On Yeka to Jensen, into De Silva. He could maybe get another assist. Or Ivan Tony could feed... Dams got on this near side, but Manchester United doing well enough so far defensively to hold us to a draw so far. To be honest, Donny van der Beek off and Nemanja Matic coming on in his place. So if anything, you'd say Manchester United perhaps looking to settle for the point away from home here. But will they get it? If David De Gea is still in goal, probably. That is a ping. And it's going to find Jesse Lingard out on the left-hand side really nicely. Roslu trying to stay with him. Nice ball by Tellers, but it's picked off. Ah, the header out is poor, though. Really poor. Bruno trying to put an end to his potential attacking danger. Pretty straightforward to do so throughout this game. I've been really underwhelmed with Bruno Fernandes in this game. Can you tell from the way that the commentary has gone over the past 75 in-game minutes or so? On Yeka. Forward there to Jensen, looking for Ivan Tony out of his feet. It's actually just a silver. And if I'd have known that when I was winding up for the shot, I certainly would have taken it on his left, not his right. Let's take the silver off. Let's give Ola Sunra the chance to come off the bench. And Canos as well. In fact, Janelt too. We'll try and hold on to this 1 1 draw. You never know. Maybe sneak something else. Great debut for Mikhail Damsgar, though. Really impressed with him. Quiet to Fred. Looking for the big pink. Can we get there? We can't. We've got to get to that. We haven't. Jesus Christ, Bruno. Where has that come from? Bruno Fernandes. So much smaller than Pontus Janssen. But he gets there first. And then with the accuracy and power on the header. It was very nearly a great goal. He's off now though, Bruno Fernandes. And Fred will take the corner instead. Matter on for Bruno. Raya with a big punch there. It's only as far as Slavid. Out to Alex Tellers. Got a lot of them pushed forward, but now they start to drop back. We're just trying to see this out. I just want this point now. I do not want to concede late on here. Juan Mata trying to create something. Finds Rafael Varane of all people, but Christopher Ayer is in the way. Five minutes added on. We will take this slow. We will take this calm. And we will ensure that we get a point against the current joint league leaders. Dropping points here may mean that they aren't lead leaders anymore by the time this game is over, which should be now and is. A 1-1 draw at home against Manchester United is not a result to be snubbed. Very pleased with that. And had I been a bit more disciplined defensively, we may well have had a 1-0 win. They had chances and could have had more if they actually shot through Bruno Fernandes. But we kept them quiet for the majority of the game. Cavani was... Not really anywhere, really, throughout the course of that fixture. And what has that done to the top of the table? Ah, Spurs yet to play. Spurs yet to play. Next for us, after an international break, is Brighton away. Brighton's lineup: Robert Sanchez still in goal. Tarek Lamptey, Dan Byrne, Lewis Dunk, Adam Webster and Solly March. Again, they're going with the narrow 2-1-2. And Wepu and Yves Basuma, Alexis McAllister sat behind Leandro Trossard at striker with Neil Mopé. Former Brentford man alongside him. So we'll see if a former Brentford man, I'm pretty sure Neil Mopé is former Brentford. Similar, similarly to uh, Ben Rama. Yes, former Brentford naturally was a great goal scorer for Brentford. In 2018 19, he scored 25 goals in 43 games for Brentford in the Championship. So, absolutely spectacular uh, player for them for a brief period of time. Hopefully, we can keep him quiet today. We've got a new. Banging goal scorer up top for Brentford. And Ivan Tony's hopefully going to make Neil Mopé look like yesterday's news. Trying to go out wide. Sonny March, to be fair, will almost certainly get a long way forward. But he's going to have to keep the ball on the pitch to be able to cause us any damage and any problems. Jensen will look inside for Onyeka. And there's Tony. He can get isolated at times, Ivan Tony. But still with... Loads of goals for us this season. Da Silva out wide to Jensen. We'll look for Ivan Tony at the back post. Robert Sanchez with the punch. Can Damsgaard get there? He can't. Tarek Lamptey rises well to get rid of it. I think Mwepu might be a new signing at Brentford. 
I can't remember if he was one of the guys I transferred pre-starting the save or not. I think so. Neil Mopé not really doing too well for Brentford so far in this game. Rico Henry popping up in central midfield. And Burmo looking for Ivan Tony, trying to beat the defender, but Lewis Stunk stands firm. Five at the back for Brentford, including the physical Lewis Dunk and Dan Byrne. He's not going to be easy to get past. And Adam Webster isn't too shabby a defender either, but I bet Brentford fan, Brentford, I bet Brighton fans would rather they still had Ben White as well back there. Still going to be a difficult defence to try and beat, though. But if their midfielder can keep giving me the ball, provided I can keep hold of it, we could still cause them problems. Pesuma to Alexis McAllister. Not sure whether that was a pass or a tackle, but it ended up still staying with Brighton. Mope finds Leandro Trossard. Have we narrowed the angle well enough? Rico Henry gets there ahead of Mwepu to win that header. Keep it in and clear it. Or, you know, fall over and bruise your tailbone. Alexis McAllister brings that down nicely. Hello, little back heel. Neil Mope has limited options, but options nonetheless. That's a nice ball by McAllister. And Solly March gets onto it. And that'll be a corner now for Brighton. And from the set piece, they might cause us problems. Those tall, physical, dominant players at one end when defending might cause us problems from set pieces up this end too. Trossard back to McAllister, I think was just on side still. Ah, I nearly fouled him there. That was very nearly similar to the Bruno Fernandes incident where we failed him with getting a, a contact where he didn't fall down, rode the challenge as best he could, but the referee deemed it a foul. On that occasion, he could have made a similar call, but didn't, thankfully. We could have been going... 1-0 down from a penalty there. Ivan Tony has Jensen arriving. And round the corner is Umbermo. And into the middle is Josta Silva. Why have he not headed that? Why is he, why have you not headed that, pal? Could be 1-0 up there, couldn't we? Definitely. Definitely. Onyeka straight down the throat of the keeper. Um, hmm. Pretty annoyed at uh, Josta Silva there. Just use your bonts, pal. And that's 1-0 Brentford. And Wepu. Forward to Leandro Trossard. Mope has got McAllister getting forward on one side. And Trossard going again on the other. Here's Tarek Lamptey forward from right wing back. Mikko Henry not properly dealing with it. Oh, that's nicely done. That's going to be 1-0. That was very well worked. Brighton take a 1-0 lead. There has been a goal coming in this game. Either side could have scored it. It just so happens that they're the ones that take the advantage just before half-time. It's ball by Lamptey in there. And then that flick immediately from Mope to Trossard just made the move. Not able to mark his man at the back post properly there, of course. And unfortunately, it's going to cost us a goal. We're 1-0 down. Alexis McAllister has his first goal of the season. And we trail at half-time. Here's Tarek Lamptey down the right for Brighton now. They're going to look to extend their lead. We're going to look to nullify their lead and get ourselves back level if we can. Dan's got, is going to have a lot to do on that left-hand side, I think, especially if Tara Lamptey's going to get forward a lot, which he's done. And Onyeka's pass didn't quite have the, the pace on it to get all the way through. Just as Hill was won it back. Well, not going inside, but that, didn't even, that wasn't the case of pace on the pass. That was just straight direction on the pass was nowhere near good enough. Here's Leandro Trossard. Options. One of which is to kick it straight at Pontus Janssen. Forward then to Ivan Tony. Counter-attack. Here we go. Come on then. Janssen. Driving forward. And Burmo is an option on the right. Got options on the left. Oh, what a challenge. Never mind. We've still got possession. Advantage played. Ivan Tony. Back quickly to the silver. Tony, keep that run going. Come on, Ivan. Bury this now. Robert Sanchez with a good save. Is it to be a corner? It will be. I don't think the defender's going to get this. Only much tried his best. He wasn't able to do it. I think Brighton are making a change. They are. Alexis McAllister off. I'm not too sure who that was coming on in his place. We'll find out momentarily. Ball delivered in. It's Percy Tau. Onyeka wins the header from another corner. But unfortunately, again, straight at Robert Sanchez. Time to make a change for me, I think. I'm going to bring Canos on. I'm going to bring him on from Burmo on the other side, and we'll see if that makes a change. Trossard. Got back heel to Onwepu. Percy Tau. Almost dropping into... The midfield is a, a third centre mid at the minute rather than pushing as a cam behind the front two. Hopefully that isn't just a, a decision from them to try and firm up defensively. No, you can see Percy Town now absolutely wanting to get forward and have a part to play offensively. And Wepu back to Trossard. They've got blue and white shirts all over the shop at the minute. And it's 
a struggle to deal with everyone. And Weppo tries to fire that through, but Rico Henry gets rid of it. And Onyeka could try and... Yikes, get away. What a challenge from Mwepu, though. The referee deems it a foul. Now, those substitutions for us will take place. And we'll hope to get ourselves an equaliser before full time. But at the minute, it is definitely a hope rather than a expect or definite. We've got Arsenal at home next as well. So it's not going to get any easier. Although, <laughs> to be fair, the Man United game was more straightforward than this one against Brighton. Canos, what can he do from here? We'll lift it into the middle. Ivan Tony with the overhead kick. Offside. And as has everything been so far. Straight at Robert Sanchez. Here's Jensen. Come on, Mikel. Please provide some magic here. We desperately need it. He's shaken off one challenge. Jensen. Tony. Spin your man. Beat your man. Aaron Webster nails me. And that is game over. Oh. A victory for Brighton. And that back five for them, particularly the three centre-backs, just dealt with everything we threw at them. They had one shot. They scored it. We just couldn't get the ball past the goalkeeper and or, and or around the centre-backs. Defeat against Brighton, a point against Manchester United. And with Arsenal next, don't know what's going to happen. Uh, Christian Nogu is now not going to be growing anymore. He's at 76 rated. Ivan Tony, however, has grown a bit more. He's also saying thank you for the for playing him. As discussed, well, yeah, guess what? Not happening, lads. Sorry. Uh, and Ivan Tony's development schedule 81 now, is he? 80. Up four ratings so far this season to 80. So I think we can't really expect much more of Ivan Tony this season. Regardless, he's been unbelievable for us. 16 goals in 24 Premier League games so far. Uh, I don't know, as more than a couple of players have really been scoring goals for us. Tony, De Silva, and Bermo. That's kind of really it. Kind of really it. We are very one-dimensional as a side right now. And if we lose Ivan Tony for any reason, injury or suspension, more likely injury than anything else, then oh, we might be in trouble. We might be in trouble just with the next fixture. Arsenal coming up next. Arsenal with Bernd Leno in goal. Cedric, Rob Holding, Gabriel and Kieran Tierney. Torreira and Koke, new signing captain as well. Martinelli, Smith, Rowe and Saka with Lacazette up top. Saka, not sorry, Saka. Martinelli, Smith, Rowe and Lacazette are all shattered. Specifically the, the middle two, Lacazette and Smith, Rowe. Half stamina before we've even started the game. Like, look at Lacazette there, look. That's as we start the game. So Christ knows what Mikel Arteta is doing with his selection. He must have fully fit available options on the bench. But he's just elected not to use them on this occasion. Doesn't mean that they're going to be any worse off defensively. But hopefully we can keep them quiet going the other way. This is Joel Anderson's first game for the club. Getting his first start. And he's not even appeared for as a substitute yet. So certainly... Getting his first game time, his first minutes as a player. Hopefully, he can have an impact. Ah, Dan's gone. Not quite able to find a teammate, so we can have an impact right at the very beginning of the game. Lacazette is clean through here, but praying that that lack of stamina comes to... Oh, no! Oh, comes to be something that we can use against him. That he's just fast enough. Just fit enough. To stay away from the defender. The save from a tame shot. Falls straight to Martinelli. Who tucks it home. Lacazette tucked home a rebound goal last time we played Arsenal. This time he set up a rebound goal. And we're 1-0 down. Balls. Saka. Into Alexandre Lacazette. Out wide here to Kieran Tierney. Over the top looking for Bukayo Saka. He's onside I think. Turns inside. Support from Lacazette. Forced a little bit too far wide. Lucas Torreira's shot's blocked. And they committed a lot of bodies forward there. So let's go on a quick counter, shall we? Onyeka. I think he's onside here because Gabriel dropped. Pretty sure Ivan Tony's onside. Surely this has to be 1-1. One, one. Bernd Leno with a save. Oh, keep that out! Just a silver! Bam! Rocket! Oh, my God! I mean, yeah, open goal, but to hit it like that, just bosh! Oh, that is satisfying. Very 
very satisfying. What a hit. As I'm recording this, literally about two minutes ago, Brentford have announced the signing of Johan Wisser from Lorient. So, in the next transfer window, we will be looking to bring him in to the club. Just wanted to let you guys know that I'm aware of the deal in real life and we will act upon it over the course of the next transfer window in this save. Unfortunately, it was announced just a little bit too late. I did earlier today record the video you saw yesterday with a transfer window. And if, uh, if they'd have announced it five hours early and announced him this morning rather than this afternoon, then I'd have signed Johan Wisser rather than uh, Mikhail Damsgaard for that wide roll. As much as I wanted, Damsgaard. Oh, Emil Smith-Rowe has completely written us off. As much as I wanted Damsgaard, obviously I would have signed Johan Wisser because that's the way that Brentford have gone in real life. Um, maybe at some point we signed Emil Smith-Rowe. He seems like he's pretty good. Whether he's got 50% stamina or not, that's a cracking goal. We're behind again. To Saka. He's gone again, Lacazette. Here's Kieran Tierney. He's not a full fitness himself. Back to Koke. In towards Smithrow, down to Lacazette. If they keep the ball on the floor and don't look to play through balls that players have to race onto. You're not. Oh. Penalty for that. Okay. Okay. Fine. I'm not having it. Not having it. 3 1 Arsenal. Brighton actually winning 1 0 away from home at Anfield. So they're clearly quite the capable side in career mode again in this save. They were really good in the RTG save we had with Barrow. And it turns out that Brighton, in general, pretty damn solid. Wow. Doing it in multiple saves in a row. Nice tackle by De Silva there on Emil Smith Rowe. We're trying to do. Some attacking of our own here to give ourselves a goal. Sergi Canos is in behind. Delivery blocked well by Kieran Tierney. And despite all of the attacking I've tried to do in this game, I needed that one rebound to fall my way for me to actually get the ball into the back of the net. 3-1 down now thanks to that contentious penalty decision. Gabi Jesus to Real Madrid, Gabi Jesus. Wow, they did, they did buy a new striker, didn't they? Maro Akari, I think. Not Maro Akari. Uh, Chiro Immobile signed for City in the most recent window, didn't he? Onyeka will look to play that through there. Jens will get it quickly around to Canos. And can this time we find a teammate? Oh, he's looking for Ivan Tony, who just committed to run towards me rather than back off towards the penalty spot. They've rushed the clearance, but Emil Smith throws going off now for Thomas Partey as they rather evidently look to hold on to what they've got rather than build for more. Justice Silva trying to find some space to maybe go for another worldie of his own, but blocked well by Rob Holding. And we'll stay 3-1 down for now. Half an hour to play or so. Torreira to Thomas Partey, who seems to have just come on and slotted into that cam roll where Smith Rowe was. So whilst they might have been going slightly more defensive, Thomas Partey actually is trying to get involved in attacks and set up attacks. So whilst you would have presumed that he was a defence-minded player or came on to offer some extra defending, He's actually being utilised as a more forward attacking player. They nearly scored a fourth there. Saka's shot well saved. Finally, Lacazette goes off and uh, Balogun comes on. So they do have a change at striker. Lacazette's offered nothing in this second half whatsoever. But that's no real surprise, is it? Considering the state of his fitness. Thomas Partey will chase after this. And there are 10 minutes to go. There is enough time to score two goals. But I'm not confident of it happening. Not the way that this game has gone so far. Can we keep that in with Christopher? Oh, yeah, he's just delaying and delaying and actually running after it. Or hoof it, trying to switch it. Can keeper get to that? Yes, he can. Quick, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Look, he's off. He's off down the line, Sergi Canos. That's where I was trying to get the ball a moment ago. And he brought it down brilliantly and turned really, really well. We'll tuck this back here for Jensen. And look for Damsgaard. Torreira tracking back with him does enough. That's loose, though. Anderson to Onyeka. Forward to Josh De Silva from the edge of the box. Rob Holding just stands there and is like, nope, you shall not pass. Oh, Torreira's just pocketed Damsgaard all game long. All game long. One minute added on. Game over.
That's an oh, annoying game to lose. A really annoying game to lose. We could have gotten something from this, but we didn't get a second goal. So that dodgy penalty decision doesn't really change things because they would have won by two goals to one without it anyway. <sighs> defeat against Arsenal, as well as defeat to Brighton, who've just drawn now with Liverpool away from home. And a draw against Manchester United. Not the best of months for us there, Mark, uh, February, sorry. Down to ninth, two points from 11th, but still looking pretty solid in the middle of the table. A loan offer, or loan to buy, in fact, from Lille for Elliot Weaver, but he's going to stay with us. Uh, I'm pla I'm pr I am actually genuinely proud of you, Ivan Tony. Thank you so much for your contributions so far this season. Certainly helping keep us in a decent league position. Sko, mm, not looking too amazing, unfortunately. Samuelson. That potential window was certainly dropped. Strom, though, could be very capable at centre about 82 to 92 potential. If his defensive stats really take a, a jump soon, then maybe he might be an absolute belter later in the year or later in the save. Uh, Olsen, still 66 rated, waiting for him to continue his growth. Rasmussen, 81 to 94 is now his window. 81 to 91 is now Morton Lunders. Uh, window as well. These guys are going to need loan football to reach those ratings and 82 to 94 for Marcus Lindgren as well. So there's the opportunity for these youngsters to get to the big ratings, but whether they'll do it in time for this save or not, I genuinely don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Ninth is where you leave me today. Tomorrow, Brent Brentford. Well, yeah, Brentford versus Burnley, Chelsea and Liverpool. Another really tough month. Really tough month. Hopefully, though, we can have a good scout report from all of those three youth scouts and maybe we'll find another stormer. We live in hope and I'll see you tomorrow to hopefully manufacture and manifest that hope into reality. I'll see you later.